Hello and welcome. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about hash maps or like Java maps. Uh, the reason I say it like that is because there's a few different implementations of maps similar as to how there was different implementations of lists and like array lists and all that stuff. Uh, so maps, if you're coming from Python like me, you can think of them as dictionaries. And I'm going to be talking about three different types of maps. So a hash map, a tree map, and what was the last one? I got it written down here. Uh, linked hash map. Sorry, I just forgot about that one. So pretty much a map is known as a key value pair in any other languages They're typically called dictionaries or hash tables or hash maps or whatnot Okay, so to create a map and I'm just gonna do this and then we'll talk about exactly what it does I'm just gonna create a map M. It's gonna equal to new hash map like this, okay and this is your simple syntax. Now to, you have to import this. So I'm just gonna import java.util. So just by clicking on it, then we have to import map as well. So we'll import uh, the map there. So you see it all, it's all coming up now for us. Okay, so now that we have that, I wanna talk about exactly what a map is. Now a map, like I said, is a key value pair, meaning that it's similar to like a list and an array in the sense that you can index things, but instead of indexing them by numbers, you index them by keys. Now keys can be anything that you want. A key could be a string, a key could be an array. Actually, I'm not sure if it could be an array, but it could be a string, it could be a number, it could be a char, uh, it could be a float. What, like pretty much whatever you want can be the key, and that key links us to a value. So the easiest way to kind of demonstrate this is just to do it and then to talk about what's really happening. So to put a new value into a hash map or into a map, what you do is you have to specify a key and a value. So you type whatever the name of your map is, in this case, m dot put, and then you need to put a key and a value. So in this case, for my key, I'm gonna type uh, Tim and it is gonna lead to the value five. So I type Tim and then the value is five. So I put that in there and now I'll just show you uh, what it looks like if we print this out to the screen because I think it will give us a decent representation system dot what am I saying system dot out dot print ln sorry guys I'm a little tired today and we will print m and see what we get. So in this case you can say we have see this so curly braces says Tim is equal to five meaning that if we're to index Tim we get the value five. Now, how do we do that? So how do we actually get a value based on a key? The way we can do this is if you put square brackets next to your map, uh, actually you can't do it like that, this is Python. We have to do m dot and then get, sorry, I'm still used to the Python syntax here, guys. We type m dot get, okay? And then we put the key in here. So in this case, I'm gonna put Tim as my key and well, you should already be predicting what we're gonna get out to the screen. In this case, we get the value five, and that is because the key Tim leads us to the value five. Now to put another thing into our map, we can do this, right? So we do Tim, we could do like Joe, and Joe doesn't have to point to a number, it could point to another string, and that string could be like, uh, I don't know, X, okay? And we can just do whatever we want, like we can have the, the key one, and or the key 11, and the key 11 points to 999, okay? And now if I just print M out, you'll see that we don't get any issues and that this works fine. We get Joe equals X, Tim equals five, 11 equals nine, nine, nine. Okay. Now this is an extremely fast data set, uh, meaning or data type, whatever you want to call it, meaning that everything from adding to removing to uh, overriding to getting happens in constant time. Now again, like I talked about in my sets video, you don't really have to understand what that means, but if you do, that's great. And just know that this does happen in constant time. Now I'm gonna show a, I guess I'll show the tree map and the, uh, what was the other map I talked about? Linked hash map first, and then we can kind of talk about the differences between them. So with a hash map, as opposed to the other type of maps I'm gonna show you, this one does not retain an order. So all of these maps can only contain unique elements or unique keys, meaning that if I try to add another key, so I try to add 11 and I try to add this to be 998, instead of adding another key that's equal to 11, we're simply overwriting this already existing key that is 11. So in this case, you can see that we overwrite it and we get 998. You cannot have two of the same keys existing in the map, but you can have two of the same values if you'd like to, okay? So sorry, that kind of got me off track, but that was important to understand. So this hash map does not guarantee the order in which we add things in. So you can see that I added Tim in, then I added Joe, and then I added 11. 
and it's showing me Joe, Tim, and Eleven. Now, this is not any kind of sorted order because how do we sort numbers and uh, strings and all that stuff together? It's not in the order that we added it in, so what order is it in? Well, it is in no order. And that is why this hash map is extremely fast because it does not keep track of the order of elements when they go in. So just know that if you're trying to like look through the map, because you can iterate through maps, and I'm gonna show you that in a second, uh, it doesn't keep it in the correct order, okay? Now, the next map that we're gonna talk about is the tree map, okay? Now this tree map is, well, we're gonna have to import it, of course. Is similar to the tree uh, list or the tree set or whatever one I showed you in the other video in that when we add things in it's actually gonna keep it in a sorted order so if I run this I'm actually curious to see what kind of sort we're gonna get okay so we don't get anything so that's that's actually a good error to run into whenever we're using a tree map the types that we add to the map have to be the same meaning that the keys have to be the same uh, data type at least I'm pretty sure so I'm gonna just gonna see if I remove this if this is gonna work for us uh, yes, so in that case, we do get, uh, in a sorted order, we get Joe, and then we get Tim, because obviously J is before T, and that's the way it's going to sort strings. So if I try to put, like, an A value in here, so it's, yeah, it's even showing me a key value, I'll literally just put, like, A is equal to B, and I guess we can't say equal, we have to say comma. Uh, what's our error? Semicolon, I always forgetting those, aren't I? Okay, so we'll run this. There we go. So you see we get A first because obviously A, well, that's the first letter in the alphabet. So that's going to show up before Joe and before Tim. So that sorts the order for us. And that means that the data types for the keys that we pass in have to be the same. So we could use numbers, we could use strings, use whatever data type we want. They just have to be completely the same for that map. Now, for the other type is a linked hash map. And what this does is it's similar to a list um, in that it keeps the same order that you add things into it. So in this case, if I print out M, you can see we get Tim, Joe, and then A. And that's because it's actually gonna maintain the order in which we added elements. So it's gonna say Tim, that was the first element, so that's gonna be the first thing that we show. And then Joe, that's gonna be the first thing, and then A, or sorry, second, and then A, this is gonna be the third thing, because that's the order in which we added them in. And those are the only main differences, um, other than like the speed of which these things run at. Uh, that you have to kind of understand right now, okay? And typically, whenever you do anything, you're just gonna be using a hash map. You don't really need uh, like a linked hash map or a tree hash map uh, or tree map, whatever it's called, for any of the stuff that we're gonna be doing uh, right now. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna show you a few methods, how we can kind of clear uh, the maps, how we can like remove elements and some useful things that you might wanna do. So what we can do uh, to get all of the key values or to get like a certain key value, we can say, Actually, I'll just show this one first. What we can actually do is there's uh, just cool things that are going to be really useful to you. And uh, dot contains value. So this is, let's see, this method contains value is not available for type map. Hmm, interesting. Match contains value object. Yeah, so we just have to put something in there. Okay. So m dot contains value. And then in here, we're just going to put uh, like any value you want. So in this case, b. So what this is gonna do is it is actually gonna check for us if this value exists in the map. And remember the values are all these, these second elements here um, and they are linked up or like attached to the key. So it's gonna tell us if B exists. Now we can do the same thing with keys and the keys are more useful and I'll show you why in a second. Contains key. And in this case for the key, I could put like contains the key five, right? And that will give us a true or false value similar to what we we're doing with sets and lists in the last video. Okay, um, now the reason keys are more useful is because if I try to do something like m.get and I put the key, let's say five, well, the key five does not exist. The value five exists, but the key five does not exist. So watch what happens when I run the program, m.get five. Actually, let's just see what this is printing out to us because I'm curious if this is gonna crash for us or not. Let's, let's see here m.get5, no, yeah. So this isn't gonna actually crash for us if we try to get a, uh, what do you call it? A key that does not exist in the map, but it's gonna return us a null value because this key does not exist in the map. That's actually interesting, I didn't know that. In Python, if you try to get a key from a map or from a, a dictionary and it doesn't exist, you actually get an error. So that's interesting to know. Uh, anyways, I guess another method I could show is, uh, let's see here, dot values. So what this is going to do 
is it actually just prints out all of the values in the map. So if I copy this and I simply print it down here, we get m dot values. And in this case, it'll just give me x, b, and 5, which are all these. And you can see it gives me that in no particular order. It's important to remember. Uh, values, let's see if there's any other ones we can use. Um, we can use clear. So I've just got a text document beside me because I always forget all these to show you. I always forget which ones. So m dot clear, obviously this is just going to remove everything from the, uh, what do you call it, the map. So we get an empty map. And I believe the last one is is empty. And this one, uh, like that, is simply just going to tell us if the map is empty or if it's not empty. Now, how much time are we at? 10 minutes. So I actually, I am not going to show you an example of using these maps. But uh, if you want to think about this and maybe try programming this yourself using the maps that I just showed you, be a good exercise. And that is given a string uh, or like an array of characters, count all of those characters uh, into a map. So have a key that's equal to, let's say, the letter. And then the value for that key is equal to the... Uh, how many times that letter occurs or how many times that character occurs and try to do that yourself and if you're able to accomplish that well then you're definitely learning and you're understanding the stuff that i'm explaining so anyways that's been it for this video if you guys enjoyed please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and i will see you again in the next one